Hi, I'm Dr. Devakant Mishra. I'm working as a Vitroretina consultant at IQ Super Speciality Eye Hospitals in India. And I'm also the General Secretary of the Young Ophthalmologist Society of India. So at the outset, I would like to thank my dear friend, Marcelo Morello, for giving me this wonderful opportunity of uh, presenting a case uh, in this wonderful session. So I was asked to present something on an ocular perforating trauma, which had posterior pole involvement. So we had this uh, very interesting case a few years back, which was an injury uh, to, a chi uh, to a boy who was uh, uh, in a game of a paintball. Uh, so I would like to acknowledge and thank uh, Dr. Dipendra Singh for giving me this case and allowing me to present it. Uh, so paintball is, of course, an unusual trauma uh, in the eye. And usually a lot of protective gear is worn, so people don't end up uh, having ocular injuries. But uh, it is powered by a compressed gas gun. Usually the gas is propane, air, or carbon dioxide. And uh, these uh, uh, guns have balls, paint balls, which are paint filled and around 17 mm in diameter. And they can travel at a speed ranging from around 60 to 250 feet per second. So that's, uh, and the injury is usually through coop, counter coop, or anterior posterior pressure to the globe. Now, the paintball projectiles, uh, they travel very high speed and uh, are smaller in size. So that explains why it can cause such grievous injuries. In a study, it was found that these balls are designed to deliver all the energy at the point of impact. So uh, all of the energy is released at the point of impact and it causes a lot of damage there. So this is the case that we got a couple of years back. And it was, he was a, a young boy who was uh, enjoying a game of uh, paintball. Uh, and somehow, for some strange reason, they were asked to remove their, by the, by the paintball company to remove their protective care while they were playing it. And he was hit. Uh, he initially went to another center and there they found a scleral perforation. Uh, the perforation was explored and uh, probably repaired as well. But the, uh, the boy had continuous uh, diminution of vision and then he came to us. So on examination, we found that uh, there was uh, a retinal, large retinal breaks uh, that were seen uh, with some amount of scarring and membrane formation at the macula. So we decided to, and of course, a shallow RD was present as well. So then we decided to intervene in this case and operate the case. Uh, here I'm sharing the video. So first uh, we did um, a proper thorough vitrectomy was performed and we could see a lot of diffuse hemorrhage was there. And this was the area of the, uh, the break. It was almost uh, uh, touching the arcade. Uh, then uh, we wanted to deal with the, the membrane formation at the macula. So uh, the ILM was stained with brilliant blue and with the ILM forceps, the uh, ILM was uh, removed. So that's an important step because uh, it can impact our the vision visual outcome of the patient. And uh, then we did a thorough examination of the periphery and to locate if there were any other uh, breaks available. Uh, and after performing the fluid gas exchange, uh, uh, we did uh, we started doing the laser for this case. There was some uh, we tried to dry the retina as much as possible because that was very uh, essential for this, uh, for the retina to stay attached. And a th thorough laser was performed. Uh, and as you can see, it was really difficult for us as it was almost uh, approaching the uh, macular area and the fovea. So, uh, right. Now this was the uh, situation after one week, the retina was well attached. There was some subretinal heme and some locations, but uh, the macula was good and uh, uh, there was no fluid anywhere. So we were, we were quite happy with this results. After six months, then we found this, that uh, there was some pulling of the retina. So there was some tractional membrane uh, formation was there, but uh, all throughout the retina was uh, very well attached. So then we planned uh, the second surgery. The patient had developed uh, eventually some cataract as well and I can see there was emulsification of the oil that was happening. So we planned a FACO emulsification with uh, silicon oil removal. 
Yes, there's a lot of emulsified oil that you could notice there, and uh, uh, an IL was successfully implanted. Then we performed the silicon oil removal. Uh, so as you can see, there was these vitreous uh, tags were there, which were pulling the retina. Uh, so it was a good opportunity to cut these uh, tractional bands uh, so that the pull on the retina can stop and uh, that can lead to uh, detachment of the retina and uh, distortion of vision as well. So there was some, as you can see, there was some uncut vitreous that had, and that was there. Uh, so we remove that and uh, then we realized that uh, there were some areas that required some on uh, some more laser and uh, just for a satisfaction we did some more laser was performed so there was one challenge that we thought of before attempting the case that uh, there might be leakage of silicon oil from the perforation uh, so in the literature and we found that there was one solution that a scleral patch craft can be used uh, but we were quite lucky that there was no uh, the perforation had healed with scarring and there was no leakage of silicon oil that had happened uh, so this is one of the reports where they have showed how a preserved scleral patch graft can be uh, used uh, this is of course in the case of a uh, scleral thinning in case of a scleral buckling procedure but it can be used in such cases as well so at the uh, moment the patient uh, after six months follow-up after the silica the second surgery was the retina of attached. We found that there was um, uh, the uh, posterior capsular op op opacification was there. So we did a yak cap, and uh, the patient is enjoying a relatively good vision at 624. And the patient is, has also sued the company uh, for this uh, damage, and they are fighting this case uh, uh, there in the courts. So thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity, and I'm uh, ready to take any questions if there are, and to hear from the panel also what they think about this case. Thank you so much.